the last programming video showing what you could do with a pulse was popular and everybody said, but what can you do with a sawtooth? So this one is the sawtooth episode, as it were, and quite good fun to make these, especially as I get to get all these beauties out and have a little play with them. So yeah, here's the sawtooth. Sawtooth has a nice, big, rich harmonic tone. It's got all the odd harmonics and all the even harmonics. And it just can fill a room all on its own. Don't need anything else. Nice lead tone or nice bass tone. And just to show you, it's slightly different. Well, it's quite a lot different to the pulse. On the pulse, we can do different shaped pulses. So different thicknesses of the pulse, and we can modulate it as well, obviously. So you don't have those options with the sawtooth. It's much more of a static. What you see is what you get. But like I say, keep it simple and you can cut through any mix. Okay, then let's start off with a simple bass tone. We'll, uh, well, a synth bass tone. We'll add some envelope to the filter, drop the filter cut off down. If we drop the decay further, we get a sequenced bass tone. And just to show you what that sounds like on a pulse. Add some more envelope there. It's a lot hollower sounding than the sawtooth. Which is a lot punchier. But if we add some resonance, we can turn this into a nice funky bass. Add some more resonance. Funkier bass. And if we add some attack, we get these sort of quacky bass tones. So playing with the resonance and the decay and the envelope modulation gives you all sorts of different things on this. And you just play with the envelope times to fit this into your track, really, if you've got a slower track. Or a faster track. Obviously. But if we knock that down to zero and whack the resonance up, we get those acid tones, so... It's actually a typical acid sound, isn't it? Playing with the envelope mods, the decay and the resonance, really. Don't really have to play with the cutoff. Knock it down, then play with the envelope mod. I find it just makes things a little bit more controllable. But now we've got the resonance up. Let's have a little play with this filter. Let's turn the envelope modulation down and just play with this manually. This is a manual sweep, and I've got to play this less than 10 seconds because I keep on getting filter sweep claims. It's such a common tone that so many tunes use it. And the reason I'm doing this manually as well, there's a couple of reasons. One is because if you're, if you're doing stuff on your door or you're doing it via MIDI, you can draw in your filter sweep so that you get it the exact length you want. Uh, and also on this, um, it's really, really fast, the attack. Wow. 
So I can't really do a nice build on it, but we can do a nice decay. So let's do a nice filter sweep tone. That's some release. Now, if I put this in unison, on this, I'm in unison 2 mode, which is sort of a little bit sloppy, maybe. It's detuned the oscillators. I've only got four voices on this. If you've got six voices, or if you've got eight voices or 16, you can get this a lot more uh, dramatic. But you'll hear that there's more than one filter playing in this. That's a nice big unison sweep. Let's put the ensemble on, so it's a chorus. While we've got the unison on, let's turn that into a nice unison bass tone. So we'll drop the decay, drop the release, and drop the resonance. Again, Adjust to soup, but nice thick tone. Make it snappy. So, loads of electronic sounding tones there. Let's go to more natural sounding tones. Let's go to um, let's go to some brass. <laughs> Brass, I hear you cry, yeah, uh, these 80s since did, or 70s since did attempt to do brass and strings and stuff like that. And the trick to doing the brass is that you have a little envelope attack on the, on the filter. So we'll have a little bit of envelope modulation, turn the resonance down, turn the cough up a little bit. Straight away, it sounds a little bit brassy. Have no release when you got brass, you're either playing your trumpet or you're not. Bit longer envelope maybe. We can make it more melancholic by adding a little bit of an LFO in there. It's got a little delay on the LFO, so it doesn't start to play straight away. And it's on the filter. So the harder you play your brass instruments, the brighter it is. So if you're modulating your breath, you're getting louder and quieter. Well, you're, you're getting brighter and darker. So if we want to play something a bit harder, for example, let's take the LFO off, put the cut off up. Got a brass section, let's bring this up a bit and that down a bit, but all I'm doing here is trying to get the, the final cut off a little bit lower. Make it brighter by increasing the envelope modulation amount. Then we could add some sub to that, make it a brass section. Play an octave higher. Add some ensemble. 80s brass. And we could make that a little bit more electronic. Everything becomes electronic when you add some resonance to it. <laughs> 80s synth brass. Little one for you Wham fans. <laughs> yeah. More synthy by adding more resonance. So let's move from the brass section to the string section. Take the ensemble off. 
We'll try and go for a violin now. You modulate a violin tone, you know, or, or a cello. It's by vibrato, by doing this on the string. So it's slightly different to the brass. So we'll modulate the uh, VCO. So you're modulating the tuning rather than the filter. So let's have a listen to where we get up to here. In fact, I'm going to increase the sustain there because once you play your string, you hold it on, have a small decay down to a smaller um, sustain level, hit your string slightly louder and then a little bit quieter and resonance off. Also, strings are brighter than brass, so you turn that up a bit there. Well, they are in general. I'm going to add some release here because although um, you stop playing your string, you stop playing the instrument, the actual body of the instrument does have some sort of reverb in it, doesn't it? It's a little bit too much there, and let's add a bit more time. I know it doesn't sound really like a cello, but if you pull up the cello on Majuno 2, it sounds something like this. And then if we put this on an arpeggiator, It's gone all clockwork orange, hasn't it? So definitely a 1970s synth-inspired string tone, I think. But let's turn that into more of a string section than an individual instrument. So obviously play chords, make sure we go back into poly mode. turn the modulation down a little bit but that's essentially it we could add some ensemble to it high strings you play higher and maybe a bit brighter cellos and the like maybe a bit darker but you get a bit brass in there as well they're not perfect but that's what they are quite nice though but to turn that into a pad, we can add some more resonance. Now we're instantly more synthy and drop that cut off down. We'll increase that time a bit. And increase the release. And what we're gonna play. Now let's make that like a lo-fi pad. We can start wobbling the VCO a lot more. A bit like you've put it to tape and it's meandering a bit. I like that effect. Stick it on the VCF as well so the tape's absolutely knackered. Make it again more electronic by playing with the, the LFO waveform. That's how you do those sort of EDM tones, you modulate the LFO so it starts modulating whatever.
just by playing with the LFO speed. But if we drop down the release times and take the modulation off and the resonance down, we get into this weird like accordion territory. I don't know any sea shanties, so I can't really play anything, but... <laughs> Obviously. But it's quite a, quite a nice little um, accordion tone, that. But if we add a sub, it turns into a spooky harmonium. Weird, but quite nice. Uh, and as we're on organs, let's do the um, resonance trick. Got keyboard follow on full. We'll turn the oscillator off so we can't hear it for now. We'll turn the ensemble off as well. So just listening to the filter, turn the envelope modulation off and the sub off. And now bring the oscillator back in. Just checking there that it was tracking okay. There we go, we've got a rock organ. <laughs> it's got much more of a rock organ sound, I think, than the than the pulse. And again, you sort of tune your different harmonics using the cutoff. And the resonance is almost like the volume of the second oscillator or the second drawbar or whatever. Try some ensemble. Well, I think we covered a fair amount of ground there. We did bass, we did electronic tones, we did brass tones, orchestral strings, pads, sweeps. So an awful lot of little things you can do there with, with a sawtooth. And I think next time we're going to get the Jupiter 6 out and do some dual oscillator tones, really just so I can play with the Jupiter 6 for a bit of fun. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, please think about subscribing, ring the bell, join me over on Patreon. This channel is supported by YouTube ads and by my wonderful patrons. So do head over to patreon.com slash Starsky Car, where for the cost of a really dodgy, lukewarm, nasty, elaborate coffee a month, you get access to patches, samples, and all sorts of nice little goodies. Also, do take a look at my starskycar.com website. Again, there's patches and the samples and stuff that you can buy. There's free stuff as well, but it's really nice if people buy stuff because it really does help to support the channel. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for staying to the very end, and I'll see you um, on the other side, maybe with some uh, Jupiter 6 action. Anyway, see you next time.